We will briefly work through your report for Part B of the assignment to give you some sense of how to use that effectively. Now, what does your report provide you with? Well, clearly um, your name, and then it analyzes how you've gone in each question compared to the maximum marks available, compared to the average, and then also gives you a rank for your question and a rank overall. So there is um, six areas in the, this question. Um, the biggest one was the worksheet. And then from the worksheet, you had the income statement and the statement of changes in equity, which came together on the one page. Then followed it up by the balance sheet. And then as well as that, you had um, adjustments to be made in the general journal. And you also needed to bring closing uh, entries to account in the general journal. And you need to post those items to the general ledger. So they're the six key areas of the question. So we can see the maximum marks for the worksheet is 33. In Fred's case, Fred has got 25.5, um, which is just a little bit better than average, and he's ranked 27th for that question. 27th is about, is probably around about 60 people doing it, so um, as you'd expect, that's about the middle, which is in line with this um, it's about the average mark, just a little above the average. You can also get some guidance here of compared to average, which questions you did best in. Um, and in this one, the general ledger was the best, down to the balance sheet was the worst. So this will help you identify areas that you'd like to go away and learn more. Now, if we go down further, there's a graph, which will uh, give you some indication. I can get down to the graph. Or up to the graph. Right, so here's your graph and this just rates the, your possible marks um, expressed as a percentage for each question. So the worksheet, the income statement, the um, equity statement, the balance sheet, the general journal and the general ledger. And you can see how you did <coughs> compared to average. So you get a sense of um, where you're doing well. well the general ledger in this in this example, Fred was able to post all the journal entries he wrote uh, correctly to the general ledger. Um, but here's probably a bit of an incon inconsistent basis. The general journals he wrote were not very good, and I guess it's uh, easy to see that I made this up as an example because this these two are not likely to come together. But we'll just treat them as though they have. So. White space, especially above these blue lines, indicates your problem area. So the biggest problem that Fred has is the general journal, and then the next biggest problem would be the balance sheet. So what you might then like to do is see, well, what, what makes up the general journal? And so we can go down to lower. Oops, I can get down lower. So we can go down here and we can see um, here's a more detailed breakup of the questions, but I'll keep going down until I find the general journal. So here we see in the general journal, which was fairly weak overall, um, the drawings was done perfectly. Well, let's say there was adjusting entries. And so the adjusting entries, there was a five, five adjusting entries, and um, Fred has only got one of these correct, or two of them half correct. So 20% of the marks, so clearly you want to go back and look at adjusting entries and understand adjusting entries better. Then as far as closing entries go, there's four key closing entries related to income, related to expenses, related to capital, and related to drawings. So you want to see how you did with each of those. And then the one down the bottom would be how well have these uh, items been posted. So as I said, it's unlikely in practice that you'd do poorly here and do well here. But I just um, put these figures in as a, an example that we could look at. Let's have a look at some other things you might be interested in. So the balance sheet was the next uh, worst area. So why don't we look at the different components of the balance sheet? Well, there's assets. 
there's liabilities and there's equity. Now we also want to look at the general layout. Um, does it have a date on it and clearly does it balance? So the current assets, it's how have you gone for uh, the current assets? So, um, and, but also making sure you've got the contra items right. Non-current assets, there was only one uh, non-current asset and that was uh, depreciate, well that was um, the, the capital item and less the accumulated depreciation. Then the total assets, your current liabilities, total liabilities, because there was no long-term liabilities. Does the uh, capital agree with what's in the um, changes in owner's equity? So is that amount being correctly carried forward into the balance sheet? Does the balance sheet balance? And that is the total of the assets. Does that equal the total of the uh, liabilities and the owner's equity? Being the accounting equation. So the balance sheet is the accounting equation. Now let me move back towards the top with this. So one of the key uh, ideas of this report is also for you to have a sense of how accounting information may be presented. So you'll get items, you'll get some type of um, budget, let's say, you know, and maybe your performance to budget, and there there could be a variance and here we have an average but what this report will give you is some sense of um, how good you are at using accounting information and it will also give you a sense of uh, how you're doing in the unit compared to um, the average where you rank for each question and therefore where you need to improve goodbye